welcome to VTU e Shikshana program. In the last class, uh, I was discussing about uh, electron pneumatics, in which we have discussed about uh, relays, and then uh, we have discussed uh, read sensors, which are predominantly used in the pneumatic uh, cylinders uh, to control the stroke of the cylinders and get the feedback of the cylinder status, distance uh, statuses. So also we have discussed about uh, uh, how to designate NO and N, uh, NC contacts of a relay switches or switches uh, in general. So that is uh, 1, 1, 3, 1, 4 is used for open, uh, 1, 1 and 1, 2 is used for the closed contact elements. So this is the standard designations. Uh, industrial standards which are being represented on the drawing sheets. Now we will continue uh, with the session. I was uh, discussing about this and I have told the 1, 3, 1, 4, 2, 3, 2, 4 why it is being used like this because all of them are normally open type of contacts here. So that is why we use the we use the uh, we use uh, 1314 contacting type, uh, normally open type of contacts. So now we will tell something about uh, what are the different methods of connecting and how the industry uh, says the different circuits in different methodologies that has been used. So I am talking about now a word called dominant on. So why a, this is to be understood is more frequently industry uses these kinds of words dominant on, dominant off like that. So what is dominant on you have to understand. Here if you observe when a push button S1, we have taken S1 which is, which is a push button type of switch, spring is there inside, when you press it, it gets connected. When you press this, the contactor element K1 coil gets power supply. So a briefly 24 volt potential reaches the coil K1 and the normally open contact K1 in the current part 2, if you observe here. In the path 2, we have used one of the switches, normally open type of switches of this relay. So that is here, this one, this one, okay. Uh, in serial connection with a, a switch, normally closed type of switch, which is S2 in this case. So as soon as you press this, coil gets energized because of that this gets closed and the even uh, if you take hand your back, S1 is taken back, means you have taken your hand back, then also momentary signal already connected the energize the coil, the power now continue to move in this path, power will continue to move in this path now. So observe this now you will press and take back. So momentary, momentarily you will operate this. So that momentary pressing results in closing of this for a fraction if you press this, this gets energy and this gets closed. So the power will continue to move in this path because we have a NC button here. So Suppose if you press or break this NC by pressing it, then, then power can break to this. But however, at that point of time, if I press S1, again it may come. So means if we, this is uh, even though I press this to break this, if somebody presses S1 unknowingly, the power is on to the K1 only. So that is why on becoming a dominant here. 
So, in any case, this or this, any one is closed, I get my relay coil energized condition, in energized condition. So, that is, hence we referred this as a dominant on type. So, uh, now if this is on, in the third line, in the third line, K1 gets closed and the hooter will be on. So, what are the conditions when the hooter makes signals? When you press this momentarily, at that point it, uh, it gives a small signal, small sound. But immediately, even if you take out hand, this is continued, so it continues to buzzer, it continues to buzzer. Suppose if you break this by pressing S2, so it breaks and this breaks and the hooter gets off. So, uh, this and this, both cases, whether it is pressing uh, through this or press this and take out, this path is continued. So, dominant on condition is existing and hooter will be on during that period, that time, that instant of times when it is in the on condition, K1 is on condition. This type of circuits are referred to as dominant on. If you observe this, additional requirement of uh, requirement if both push buttons are actuated at the same time, relay coil K1 only receives voltage through S1. Even if you press this, so directly you are connecting this here, so it gets through the S1 and that will become on only. So, hence we call that as a dominant on type of circuit. Other one is dominant off, dominant off. In the dominant off what we have done? We have moved this to some other place. If you observe now in the next slide, here we have brought it. Very close to the coil. So, and all the switching and the contactor switching elements, contactor switching elements are above this, means prior to this. So, and then S2 breaker switch will be there and then your relay coil. In this condition, it is referred to as dominant of because if you observe now, if you press S1, if you press S1, as it is normally closed, K1 gets energized, coil gets energized, this gets closed and even if you take out your hand back, this line will be continued, you will be giving the power supply to this and this gets closed and your hooter will be on, your hooter will be on. But I keep holding this S2 button pressed, so that means I will show why this is called as dominant off now. I will, I will press this open, means one of my finger, I use it and keep it pressed, S2 pressed. So, if you press S1, no supply will go to the coil, this in this case, in the previous case it is not like that. So, even though if you have put your hand, put your hand on the S2 button, pressing S2, if you press S1, K1 gets energized. So, directly you can enable the output. So, hence it was designated or said as dominant on. Now, now if I keep Pressing this S2, that means S2 is in open condition, S2 is in open condition. So, I have pressed like this, S2 is in open condition. Even if I press any number of times S1, the power cannot reach this, power cannot reach this. So, hence, which is referred to as dominant 
of okay so this is how uh, we describe the dominant on conditions and dominant off conditions now safety which one is safer and how to connect it for a better safety because when we go to the industry you can make connections but only making connection and operating the devices is not the only thing you have to take the safety issues while designing the circuit so that the most safer circuit can be adopted in any design of the circuit so dominant off will be the better one and that to keeping your s1 s1 in the initial stages of the circuit so that means if you press this toggle uh, it is not a pressing type now this is a toggle turn on type switches s1 if you turn this this gets closed this gets closed so your power will come master cut off breaker is on the top now here compared to the previous circuit okay and uh, s2 is below that and when you press s1 k1 gets power and when k1 gets power this gets closed this gets closed so this will enable you to pass the current through this part to the coil and this will enable you to switch on the output element that is solenoid in this case so now if i break this if i break this switch s1 if i break this switch s1 all the circuits will become break all the elements of the circuits will become off so this is what we call it as safety if you uh, suppose i'll i'll give one example if somebody uh, walking in your home uh, is being shocked get a shock electrical shock when you reset the mcb the whole of your house supply should cut off not one line that room no we don't know where the problem has occurred sometimes so all of them has to break so which one is safer now this is much safer so if you press this everything will gets off connected to that machine every connection gets halt so that becomes a dominant off and as well as a safety safer way of designing the circuit that is why in many cases we see that uh, master cut off is given in the beginning and all the other contacting control elements are brought below that so that your circuits will become more and more safer when it connects to a machine level operations now you have understood about uh, dominant on dominant off and safety concepts in the safety concepts uh, why uh, the master switch off is kept master cut off button is kept on the beginning of the circuit so and uh, as a result what are the benefits to you all those things and now we will understand little on how solenoid works because solenoid valves you you can see but uh, you should also understand how these valves work suppose if you see this this is the diagram of the solenoid valve okay this is the diagram of the solenoid valve in uh, deenergized condition when energized you can see the difference this is connected now this is connected see this is connected means as it gets operated as ge this gets operated this connects the power supply to the the orifice and hence to the operating port so that your machine gets the air supply so in closed condition in open condition so if you observe this now how this gets operated there is a coil and a, a, a spool kind of thing which pulls 
or moves up and down, up and down like this in this space, in this space, okay, when you energize and de-energize the coil and that in turn lifts this element, you can see that what is happening here, if you observe this here. So, it lifts this and connects the ports to the chambers, respective chambers. So, uh, this is how the solenoid valve works for you. Yeah. Now, in the next slide, I am showing uh, the solenoid connected to a valve. Okay. The valve here is 3 by 2 a solenoid valve. So, that is 3 port, 2 position valves. So, that is the, this block I am showing, 2, pos, two position block uh, with 3 ports in 1, 2, 3 are the ports for that valve. So, that is in symbol 1, 2, 3. Okay. When you energize this, so this moves like this, the spool moves like this and it connects this passage path. So, that is uh, that is how you can see the small difference here in color. So, this is dark here, this is dark. So, means connected now in this way, it is connected here also. See, it is now it is linked, linked here in the energized condition. This is in the off condition, okay. one is there and this is stopped here and it is not, air is not connected to the working port 2. So, here air gets connected to the working port 2 and this gets connected to the wind side. So, that is how uh, the change of position will happen in the solenoid valves. In de-energized condition and in energized condition. So, when you switch on this, you will get this position. Okay. So, now we will take some basic uh, circuit design part of it using electronematics now. Earlier we have seen circuit design using pneumatics. So, now we will see design of circuits using electron pneumatic concepts. Here uh, in the first example, I have taken one case study. So, one case study that is we have a one cylinder, one cylinder here, double acting cylinder. The parts are moved on a conveyor by gravity and comes here and this will be pushed when it comes here, this will be pushed to this side. I want to have uh, dispensing of this parts part to the next section maybe to the next uh, bin whatever it is you consider. Okay. So, now in this case what is that I have to understand? I have to understand the part is coming here. So, I put one sensor here. So, this gets moves fast and pushes the uh, product to the bin and goes out. So, the, the requirement is push and come back. So, that is why here in the pneumatic cylinder Z1, what is the function of the Z1? Z1 as soon as the part is present here, it should move forward, move forward. So, move forward and then retract back, just simple work push and come back. So, push and come back. So, corresponding if you compare this and the wall. So, as I have a only one cylinder now in this case, one double acting cylinder, how many walls I need? Only one wall. So, assume that I have taken 5 by 2 a single solenoid wall. So, if you observe here, this is a single solenoid wall. The other side is a spring. So, this is your spring. So, two positions, one is forward and retraction, that I am doing one with the help of a solenoid and reset is through a spring. Okay. So, now if I compare this and this now, so here when uh, cylinder starts moving forward, so uh, this is the one, you have to get a signal to this okay. and then 
you remain in that condition for a while that is the cylinder travels you are holding that and then again coming back means it becomes off and remain off for some time okay so the combination of uh, actuator and valves and a signal diagram and motion diagram so so that's how we say signal diagram and motion diagram so in combination if you write you can easily understand so now uh, how you can operate that is been shown here you have to operate the, this condition only okay here one s2 is there so that is s2 this is the one okay so s2 when s2 is closed when s2 is closed what is happening you are you are just taking s0 a turn on type of a toggle type we call this is the toggle type of a switch so that will close this switch if you turn it will get closed means power is enabled to the line and if you press s1 now s1 now if the s2 is in the closed position that means in this condition i get power supply to the contacting element so this closes and it continues to flow and this gets closed and your y1 will become energized so it moves forward so when it reaches here it uh, breaks so this will become on this will become on now okay once it reaches this s2 so this will become on means my line gets no current okay so no current can flow to the coil now when when it gets energy s2 become on okay so you are changing the polarity there so earlier it was n now now this switches this gets open and that side gets connected so you will be uh, breaking the power supply to k1 which in turn breaks the power supply to this so and solenoid will become off so spring will reset the valve to back so it moves forward senses s2 means changes in s2 happen and because of that your uh, valve gets break so if this doesn't get energy so resets and the spring will take action and resets the valve back so in this way you can think use of appropriate valves and positioning them in appropriate places both are important here selection of elements and mounting of elements as per the application need and then designing the electrical circuit to get the work done as per the requirement so now i have explained how you can design an electrical electronumatic circuit for a simple applications like this in many small small projects even we get a small cylinders which may cost 2000 rupees or 1500 rupees and you can buy uh, electrical element and work design your projects and demonstrate as a major projects in your uh, period of education that is in the final semesters whatever the projects you do that you can do with these kinds of thing don't uh, prefer to select hydraulics because in hydraulics you need to have a power pack you need to have a bigger elements so the complexity is high there and the cost is also high whereas pneumatics is more easier and less costly compared to hydraulics so if you are a mechanical engineer or electro uh, mechanical students you can make use of uh, pneumatics and design some of the projects which are very interesting and uh, innovative also so now 
let us uh, take one step ahead and uh, now we will try to operate a, a, a cylinder using two sensors. So, uh, magnetic grid sensors, I have told you most important sensor in the pneumatic area is magnetic sensors and I have explained how the magnetic sensor work. It detects only magnetic material. The magnetic material is put in terms of a ring, magnetic ring and a piston uh, which moves in the cylinder. Okay. So, now we use such a sensors here to operate in this circuit. Uh, I have taken 5 by 2 a uh, one, one number with two cylinder nodes y1 y1 and y2 on either side and an actuator actuator so these are the element i connect my circuit part and supply the air in the initial position if uh, in the normal condition so the air is going to this side and this side is vented so it will be at it retracted position so, in the retracted position, what will happen here? So, this is this is showed here, pressed. See, there is an arrow written here. Okay. So, if you take start switch, knob type of a start switch, you close this. As it is already in this position, S1 is pressed. So, this gets connected and that that is in closed condition, your K1 gets power supply, relay K1 will get power supply and as soon as this gets power supply, uh, K1, uh, Y1, you can say this you can even take K1 as one element here if you want, okay, instead of this. So, uh, energize the K1 and then use the operation of the cylinder. So, there are two types of sensors. In one of the sensors, we can take like this. Let's take the second sensor. Here, what are the ways that you can connect? So, as it moves forward now, it presses S2. When it presses S2, this becomes closed. So, when this gets closed, so you will be connecting this path. So, your relay 2 gets closed. So, coil relay coil 2 gets on which in turn closes K2 element here. So, that will energize Y2. So, this will become off and this will become on automatically. So, that is how you can use uh, your different sensor integrated in the circuit part. So, uh, electro pneumatics is a complex in nature one has to have a complete understanding of different types of sensors and also has to understand two wire, three wire types, different types of sensors which are there in the market and accordingly know how to connect those things to get the proper output. So, it is very interesting to learn this, but a bit of a experience is required. You should learn it into the depth. So, then you are able to work in an industry. So, uh, not only this rate switches sometimes, there are some other sensors. What are the other sensors? That is an interesting thing. When we say sensor, only not the read or magnetic sensor is being used. So, there are other sensors like capacitive sensors and inductive sensors, optical sensors and different such sensors can be available. And if you do not have a read sensor, you have a inductive sensor with you or a capacitive sensor with you. Still, you can work using those elements to make your machine work. So, uh, but for which you have to understand the working principle of different types of sensors. Now, I will be explaining the working principle of capacitive, inductive and optical and where it should be used and how it should be used that I will take one by one. Let us consider now inductive sensor. 
inductive the word inductive means you are passing a current and which induces some kind of a flux and the interaction of the flux with the device or the element results in some signals and you can operate using those signals your circuits can be made operative using those signals so now induction you have already studied about induction in your first years electrical and other thing when a coil is there and you pass a current a coil induces a flux and a secondary coil gets influenced with that something like that so it's definitely same yeah that means here hence as i said it works on the inductive principle it can only detect the conductive materials which are coming close to it means if you have an inductive sensor the object should be of a conducting element conducting element conductor element or conducting element so if you bring in plastic near to it no it will not detect if you bring rubber it will not detect if you bring wood no it will not detect so what are the conditions here you should bring in a cast iron uh, lever or you should bring in a copper aluminum whatever wedge and dog cam ends all this can be sensed even your uh, piston rods or the actuators all these are elements which are made of aluminum or such materials so it they are conductive in nature so you can sense those kinds of elements but if you bring it very close to the wood or rubber no then you will fail to uh, get the output because you are making a mistakes in the initial level you are not understanding the working principle of the sensor so inductive sensors and other important parameter that you have to understand with respect to inductive is they have a high switching frequency what is switching frequency on and off ability in one second how many times this wall this sensor can on and off so inductive sensors can have a switching of 1500 times in a second still it can work so this is one of the advantage where you can use these sensors for counting how many number of counts has been done or uh, rotation sometimes small uh, lower rotations all these are possible so second important uh, characteristic that you have to understand is uh, switching frequency and the third one is switching distance when it will be come on keeping at a long distance or how much you have to bring the object close to the sensor so this comes under the proximity sensors category when i say proxy it should come very close to the detecting element it should come very close to the detecting element say 50 mm 60 mm so again the small distance variation is depend on the uh, diameter diameter to length d by l ratio of the sensors that you are buying so ultimately but however you should know this is not a long range sensor it's a proximity sensor now i'll move on to the next type of sensor capacitive sensor symbolically capacitive sensor is shown like this inside which you can see this symbol what is the symbol difference that you have to understand for inductive it is shown like this for capacitive we have shown two parallel plates inside that as a symbol in the symbol itself okay sometimes let us if you take the designation of this letter goes with i this goes with c this goes with b okay so all standardization even the uh, naming of this sensors with coding and uh, all that is being with standardized method they do and if you observe the symbols of that a clear 
differences can be understood on the symbol plate also that is put at on the every sensor. Any sensor that you buy will have even letters and these symbols also on the name plates. So, in the capacitive sensors now you know what is a capacitor you have a uh, two parallel plates and uh, there is a charge which is passing between this when you uh, make it bring it in circuit. Okay. So, as you move this away or close to it there can be an influence of moment the influence of the distance and also uh, the area of the secondary element if you bring it more area or less area you can have the influence of the capacitance which is generated is different. So, C is a function of area and as well as the distance mode. So, uh, taking that principle here, so uh, this sensor has been designed, here you can use either conducting materials as a objects or wood, plastic or any other type also means any material can be detected when it brought very close to the sensor. Very interesting. In the previous case inductive only conductive object should come nearer to it. Here whether it is conductive or uh, non-conductive like wood, plastic all those can also come. So, then you can ask sir then why should we have an inductive sensor in the market? There are some differences this works on capacitance uh, thing that works on inductive and uh, switching frequency of inductive is high switching frequency of capacitive is low very low comparatively 100 hertz or so. So, 100 or 125 hertz. So, means uh, the switching of that uh, capacitive sensor is slow comparatively, very less compared to other inductive type of sensors. So, uh, it does not allow it to use it in counting, high speed counting and other areas, you cannot use this, okay. speed also matters there. Okay. So, now uh, you now understood about capacitive sensor. Externally, you can mount a one capacitive sensor and fix up one rubber. Now, the rubber is fitted to this. Na? I can detect this. Okay. So, bring it like this. So, then it will detect. So, this is the second type of thing, but slow, not high switching. Okay. And the third one is referred to as optical sensors. In the optical sensors, it works on the uh, uh, photo means when a light, ray of light. So, there can be a different types of optical sensor. They are being classified as through beam sensors, retro reflective type of sensors and diffusion type of sensors. So, based on the working principle of each one in through beam a transmitter and a receiver are there. If any object passes in the middle, cuts that transmitter uh, ray of light passing into the receiver, breaks it and you can detect. In retro reflecting type, this transmits a ray of light and it falls on the secondary element and come back. So, retro reflective type. Diffusive, a, 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 there will be a change in the intensity of light when it passes. So, all these principles are being considered in photosensor and there are three basic classifications on which different applications can be covered if you use a optical sensors in the application side. Now, you have understood all the type of sensors and you have understood about the electrical elements and you have understood the connection how we make. Okay. So, you can start working at the depth level at a higher depth level. Okay. So, now take one case study now, take one case study. So, in this case study I am taking uh, your uh, uh, some ventilation door is there on the top of the roof side uh, on the roof and this uh, plate can be opened 
opened with the help of a cylinder connected to it. Nowadays, you can see uh, actuators connected to doors, which can open and close the doors also automatically, hydraulic cushion type of doors. But this is not a cushion type, but this is just a opening, different opening uh, type of a doors, which has been fabricated with a door plate and a actuator mounted at a re required angles and position properly to enable 0 to complete or 0 to 80 percent of opening possible. So, this is the connection of the hardware element on the physical side of the application. Now, when it is connected, it should have a control elements and other electrical uh, elements. So, they are now I am using I am using 5 by 3 type of 5 by 3 type of valve double uh, that is uh, solenoid on both sides with the 3 position 0 position 1 and 2 like that there are 3 position and uh, in the center in the center configuration in the center configuration I have taken normally closed type this is referred to as normally closed if you observe here so all these are like this if you observe the inside of this so all the lines are closed in the mid position so what is the advantage of this mid position is air gets locked in the circuit itself it cannot flow anywhere either to the cylinder or from the cylinder no air can travel so it locks up the cylinder and uh, the door if it is at the middle position and it stopped it do not fall so it gets locked in that position so uh, this is the advantage of the zero position in this wall condition why i have taken three position wall is what are the three positions which I want is opening, closing. Sometimes half open and keep at the half. So that means forward retraction and middle stop. Forward retraction and middle stop. Middle stop. So, means functions which I want is 1, 2, 3. So, that is why 0, 1 and 2, 3 position I have taken. So, 3 position wall I have taken with a double solenoid wall. So, the double solenoid is this side also solenoid and this side also solenoid. So, how now this will function and uh, how the uh, motion diagram and uh, signal diagram uh, I am just showing here. So, cylinder gets on here. So, when we energize one of this that is move to one position. So, you will get a forward stroke of the cylinder. So, that means you are opening now you are opening and if you want to uh, keep it in that position you can keep it to any time. Suppose if you take it uh, to the other side, you, you switch off this and switch on this side. So, this gets retracted. So, means forward retraction and middle stops can be obtained. So, that has been showed here okay, correspondingly. So, this is how uh, you can uh, make use of a signal diagram and a motion diagram to understand the various corresponding motions and when we get this that also I can tell uh, by showing like this S1 and S2 they are my uh, but uh, pressing elements that I have used in the circuit part switching elements that I have used in the circuit parts. So, now for this condition I am designing my elect uh, electrical and as well as mechanical uh, total circuit this is the circuit. So, if you observe this circuit to the left, so this side, I have given pneumatic circuit, electron pneumatic circuit, 
and to the right electrical circuit corresponding electrical circuit. So, we will observe now one is connected to this. So, 2 and 4 are connected to the two ends of the cylinder which are connected through a flow control valve. So, to reduce the speeds we have made this connection, we have used the flow control valve with check valves. And now y 1 and y 2 are the two solenoids. So, if I energize this, so I am changing to this position, I am changing to this position. In that position, this will be the connection. Okay. So, that means air will go here, it will move forward, that is upper forward. In, in our case, it is like this. So, uh, if you move it completely complete opening, if you take solenoid valve, if you break the solenoid valve in the middle, so then it will stop at that position. Okay. So, forward and now if I energize, stop this and energize this side, if I stop this and energize this side. So, air will move to this side and this gets connected to vent. So, air will go here and this side gets goes to vent. So, this will have a retraction. So, that means forward retraction, middle is stop. So, this is how we make use of the valves positions and we get our functions on the machine side or on the device side. So, now to elaborate this, now we have understood the pneumatic part. So, we will move on to now electrical side. To operate this, I had given S1, if you press S1, so we will get the power to K1. So, K1 gets energized, K1 gets energized. So, at the time Y1 will become energized. One interesting thing is, we can also say an interlock is built. If both becomes energized, there is a problem. I have told uh, how to avoid a signal overlaps. So, interlocking concepts you can bring. So, if K2 is energized, this will open and this cannot be operated. So, you can bring in K2 NC here and K1 NC here. So, that is the interlocking method that you can adopt. We have discussed that interlocking and uh, latching and all those things in the beginning itself. So, you can make use of that. So, now this gets on now, this gets on. Now, if S2 is pressed, so in that position if uh, uh, S2 is pressed, this one sorry, S2 is pressed, K2 gets energized, K2 will become close. During that time, K1 cannot be energized because this will be open at any one point of time set and reset has to be done by you and once that is off the next thing can be obtained. So, you can design your own circuits as per your requirements uh, using all the electrical elements what we have discussed earlier. So, this is corresponding electrical circuits, this is color corresponding pneumatic circuit. So, electro pneumatic circuits can be built for your required applications like this. Uh, with this, I have now almost uh, uh, coming to the end of uh, the thing, I will also slightly uh, explain some of the concepts like uh, compressed uh, air maintenance related aspects. So, when we say maintenance of uh, electro pneumatic system, most of the times uh, air filters will be filled with uh, water inside it because as it uh, moves inside this and uh, gets a deflection here, there will be a cooling effect which happens when such a travel of air from uh, through the porous elements like this. 
it can leave out moisture and these are to be drained frequently by you you have to take care of this even though you uh, you are not uh, doing it daily at regular intervals it is suggested that all the compressed air filter bowels are to be opened from the bottom there is a screw given here for the purpose you have to open this and leave the moisture which is collected in the bowel so one important maintenance concept and the second important maintenance aspects that comes here is uh, we use a different kinds of filters and regulators that has to be cleaned at regular intervals and third element is regulators in the regulators uh, there will be a springs as you work for a 6 months 1 year 1 and a half year times you open and close open and close the spring forces may have gone and sometimes this may give some problems you have to have a maintenance of uh, springs which are located in the uh, regulators so i am talking about this because you are operating this any mechanical device of uh, this nature if you operate for a, a number of cycles they lose its originality so because of that you have to have a uh, such uh, maintenance issues you have to tackle and as an engineer you should know some of the standard charts which are available Uh, while designing whether electro-pneumatic or pneumatic circuits, one of the important chart that you should know is pressure and force graphs. At what pressure, if you give to the different uh, uh, this operating pressures and uh, this, what is the force that can be generated? So there is a lines given like this. Okay. and uh, x axis is your force in newton and y axis is piston diameter here and operating pressure on this side so a combination of parameters are clubbed and the graphs are given you take the reference diameter and go to operating pressure you can know the force so you first you have to take the diameter what is the diameter here so if you take this as a diameter then uh, pressure 2 bar 3 bar 4 bar like that the corresponding line you have to choose and go to the respective positions like this okay and then you can know the force which can be developed so one is that graph and the second graph which is most important is air consumption how do we calculate the air consumption of course using mathematics you can calculate if you know the number of cycles the uh, cylinder is uh, working in a uh, one second or one minute and uh, based on that diameter of the piston and uh, rod side diameter blank side diameter knowing the differences of that you can know uh, consumption also normally the industrial air consumptions are uh, done like that we take number of machines and in the number of machines in each machine what are the number of cylinders how many number of cylinders are fitted and how many uh, strokes the cylinder has to make in particular time unit time and then we club all such uh, requirements and per minute uh, what is the total consumptions that i need and then depending on that i select my compressor so because selection of compressor is a very very important thing and if you make a wrong selection suppose if it is oversized you are spending a lot of energy bills if you undersized selection so then your company may fail to work efficiently sometimes it will become uh, some of the machines will become halt because of the lower pressures and you will end up in unproductive time so an engineer should be brilliant enough to understand exact consumption requirement 
and add the future requirement and make allowance to it and develop the circuit or the utilities uh, including selection of compressors, line sizes and all those things. So, the second uh, curve helps to do such things. Here, air consumption rate is can be known. The air consumption in uh, uh, liters stroke per centimeter stroke. Okay. So, this is piston dia is taken here and operating pressures are taken here okay. and correspondingly your link you can get the uh, approximate uh, uh, consumption here in liters per centimeter. So, this is how you can know the second graph which is most important graph and third graph very importantly. Uh, while you, you are being asked to give a x force to push some object, but they would not tell you uh, how to get this. So, they are related with the piston diameter or the piston rod size cylinder sizes that you select. So, there is a one more graph which is available, a standard graph which is available for selection of piston rod size. So, uh, here depend uh, the parameters are force required that is force in Newton to st stroke length h the stroke length and force and you will have a piston rod diameter. So, clubbing all these things if you relate you will be knowing what is the piston rod size that you have to get for a particular force level. So, this is also one of the important graph you have to understand. As you know, I am, I am showing you all the necessary information which is required uh, to design any circuit and uh, one more uh, graph which is more important is force developed by the cylinder. So, this can be uh, taken uh, using piston rod diameter on the y axis and force on the x axis. Standard graphs are available all the parts are standardized in the industry and they have standardized and uh, made trials and they had calibrated it and given the calibrated graphs to you. So, it will be easy for you to know the force developed in the cylinder and it will be easy to understand forces that are uh, the required that selection of piston rods that is required based on the forces. All these are standard things and you can know the standards and standard graphs from there you can arrive at the uh, design of design aspects. As a designer you should know all these graphs and make use of all these graphs uh, in your application design and as you enter the industry you will be exposed to uh, machine tool industry where you design different kinds of uh, machines uh, normally machine is imported complex machines. If you are good with uh, these kinds of subjects we can go to a level where we can develop machines and send it to the other countries also. So, export machines to the outsides also, but the depth is more required. So, uh, after knowing all these things uh, one more thing you need to learn what is that is I have shown up to components and pneumatics, electro pneumatics and how to draw a electrical diagram and how to rig up mechanical electro pneumatic or mechanical pneumatic uh, cylinders connected to the walls and other thing. But this has to be understood with components. In my next class, I will show the different elements. So, which are normally coming in pneumatics or electro pneumatics areas and I will take you to the lab uh, and you can see the different component and the components are fixed on to a working table and uh, uh, connected and working of the elements can be observed by you, but not for all the cases. I will take a uh, few cases and uh, uh, say 5 to 6 experiments are uh, some experiments and I will try to explain 
in detail how uh, it works also in the industry environment. And also I will tell what are the softwares which are there to learn this. The main softwares which are uh, available to learn this uh, is Automation Studio which is a software which enables you to pull all the elements of pneumatic electrical sensors onto the software screens either your laptops or computers and design your circuits using electrical or mechanical elements and operate it, simulate it and ensure the working of that before you come to the practical design aspects. So that means the total design is complex in nature, hence the industry has given you to understand, it has given you softwares referred as simulation softwares. So one of the simulation software is Automation Studio and Fluid Sim, which is again one more software which is used in uh, uh, hydraulics and pneumatics simulation parts. There can be many other softwares available, but I have worked on Automation Studio and Fluid Sim, these softwares, which is really very good and you can learn uh, from anywhere. And for students, it is also free around 29 or 30 days free software uh, is being made available for students. Download the softwares and uh, learn some basics initially through the textbook and then develop your circuits and demonstrate with simulation. So you will all almost 50 percent your learning by simulation and then you can move, move on to practical uh, concept of designs and then integrate that in a practical environment. So we are yet to cover very interesting areas that is one laboratory sessions and the second one is simulation session. I will be covering that in my future session.